Welcome to this very exciting lecture on a language. Okay, so the human brain tends to specialize uh, in terms of which half does what, and in most people the left cerebral hemisphere is more specialized in uh, language. So in most people, language centers will tend to exist only on the one side of the brain, usually the left side of the brain. However, not everyone has this sort of specialization in brain function, and some people only have partial specialization. So it is possible to have language centers on both sides of the brain, um, and this is most commonly uh, found in very young children, um, because um, the human brain only tends to specialize as you get older. Some left-handed people also have unspecialized brains, so they'll have um, language centers on both sides of the brain. And women tend to have less lateralized brains, so they will tend to have more. Uh, they have a higher percentage of having language centers on both sides of the brain, even though one side might be the dominant side. They might have some small language centers also on the opposite side, uh, or they might have no lateralization at all, as opposed to men, uh, the majority of whom always, uh, have brains that are highly specialized, so they only have language centers. On the, uh, on the left side for the most part. And these structures uh, tend to be found along the lateral cerebral sulcus. And the big sort of three structures are Broca's area, the arcuate fasciculus, and Wernicke's area, um, with the fasciculus basically being the pathway that joins Broca's and Wernicke's areas. And we'll discuss each of uh, these two areas in a bit more detail just now. Okay, starting off with Wernicke's area. So Wernicke's area is actually in the temporal lobe, but uh, in practical terms you'll find that, the Wernicke, that Wernicke's area is actually at a crossroads between the temporal parietal and occipital lobes, which is great because then it can take input from all those different um, sensory um, inputs. It's close to the auditory cortex, so it can get um, um, auditory input. Can, it's close to the occipital lobe, so you can get visual input when you're reading. And if you're a blind person and you're reading Braille, it can also take some input from the sensory areas. And Wernicke's area recognizes language, um, spoken and written language, so it's also necessary for reading. Um, and not only that, but also controls grammar and can plan speech, so it's responsible for language input and to some extent language output. Um, and if you have a lesion in Wernicke, Wernicke's area, you're going to lose the ability to understand language, whether it's written or spoken. And uh, you might be able to say some words and uh, a few phrases and such, but you'll t struggle um, getting the words to agree with each other grammatically. Uh, you've, you'll struggle with grammar, and thus your speech might come across as mostly nonsensical. Just posterior and superior to Wernicke's area is the angular gyrus. Um, which is technically part of the parietal lobe, and you'll see on the illustration later on in the slideshow that uh, angular gyrus is all wedged between Wernicke's area and occipital lobe. So the angular gyrus uh, seems to have play a huge role in interpretation of visual stimuli as a language, and indeed, if you have a lesion of the angular gyrus, uh, you'll lose the ability to read. Uh, you might still understand speech when spoken to you, but you won't be able to read at all. So um, once Wernicke's area has decided to um, create some language output and decides what you want to say, then sends it via the arcuate fasciculus to Broca's area, and Broca's area is, um, is um, mostly involved in language expression, specifically in controlling the mouth, lips, cheeks, tongue, larynx, in order to be able uh, to speak what you want to say. What's of, of note with Broca's area is that it's quite close to the inferior precentral gyrus, which is the motor control area specifically of the mouth, lips, cheeks, tongue, and larynx. So it makes sense that Broca's area is close uh, to those parts of uh, um, the brain controls, motoric control areas that it needs to be involved with. Broca's area does also have some role with grammar, especially in syntax planning um, and in the understanding of syntax. Syntax being the, um, the grammatical roles that words play uh, uh, in terms of their position uh, in a sentence and how different words must position themselves. If you have a lesion of Broca's area, even if Wernicke's area is intact, uh, people might struggle to put words in the correct order. Uh, in order to make a sentence and might struggle to understand um, sentences. 
Um, lesions of the broker's error will cause slow speech and occasional use of uh, incorrect words because um, um, uh, of the inability to process syntax uh, and difficulty choosing between words uh, and uh, where to put a word in a sentence in order so that it will uh, make sense. So. Um, Instead of being, uh, they might struggle to say I went into the train. They might say the train went into um, I, for example, um, that sort of thing. They struggle with. Another thing about broker's error is also plans writing. Um, so the superior part of broker's error, especially, is involved with writing, and um, it's also a bit nearer to the lateral part of the precentral gyrus, which is involved with the, ha with the hand and the arm. Okay, so these structures, Broca's error, Wernicke's error, will tend to be on the left side of the brain. Um, sometimes it can be on both sides of the brain, but um, in most people, they are at least dominant on the one side of the brain, if not exclusive to one side of the brain. That's not to say the other side of the brain is completely uninvolved uh, in language. The opposite hemisphere um, also has language areas also scattered along the lateral sulcus. In fact, more or less the exact opposite position of Broca's areas and Wernicke's areas. And these are called the affective language areas. In other words, they control emotion, uh, the, and emotion will context around language. So the area opposite to Broca's area, so in other words, if you take Broca's area and then go to the exact same spot on the other side of the brain, that area is involved with emotional expression, and now it's the ability to express emotion in your language, the ability to say something with humor, or say something with anger, or to say something lovingly. Um, this is the area um, uh, that is um, required for that. And if you have a lesion of this anterior um, affective language area, um, you're going to have a lesion. Uh, you're going to have a condition called aprosity, which is emotionless speech. You will struggle to f uh, say something in an angry way. You will struggle to say something in a funny way. Your uh, your speech will be flat and emotionless. The posterior um, affective language area, or the area that corresponds to Wernicke's area, but on the opposite side of the brain. Um, is involved with receiving emotional content. So lesions of this area cause an inability to understand um, the emotions um, behind what a person is saying. In other words, if someone says a joke, you won't get it. If someone says something angry towards you, you won't get it. Um, whether someone's speaking angrily to you or lovingly to you, it's all the same to you because you've lost the ability to interpret emotion along with language input. All right, um, with reference to writing, the superior part of Broca's area is, um, has its own name. It's called Exner's area. And in order to be able to write, um, information has to travel through Exner's area to the appropriate area of the precentral gyrus that controls the arm and hand. And Exner's area is more or less adjacent to that area. So whereas the, the mouth and the tongue are sort of on the inferior aspect of the, or not the inferior, but inferior and lateral aspect of the uh, precentral gyrus, where so it's nice and near Broca's area, Exner's area is a little bit higher up, so it's right and adjacent to uh, the arm and hand uh, control areas uh, for writing. And if you have a lesion of Exner's area only, you'll still be able to speak, but you'll lose your ability to write, and that condition is called agraphia. So in summary, um, our language areas of the brain are usually on the left side. Wernicke's area receives input and interprets um, this input as language if it's um, compatible with a language it knows and understands. Um, and you also need the angular gyrus uh, for being able to read. Wernicke's area also is responsible for language output, uh, makes a plan for what you're going to say and how the grammar fits in, sends that output via the arcuate fasciculus to Broca's area. Broca's area also has some role with grammar planning and syntax, and then creates a motor plan for speech and writing, and sends signals to appropriate areas of the precentral gyrus, and in the opposite side of the brain, the representational hemisphere, um, the emotional input and the emotional um, output um, of language are controlled uh, in a way that corresponds to Wernicke's and Broca's areas on the opposite side. Just so you have an understanding where these areas are, 
Wernicke's area is roughly in this area, right next to the primary auditory cortex in this area. So what you hear immediately goes into Wernicke's area if it's language. Um, as you can see, Wernicke's area is at a junction between the parietal lobe, occipital lobe, temporal lobe, meaning you can get information from all over the place. If you're a blind person reading Braille, you're going to send a sensory input from the postcentral gyrus viral lobules into um, Wernicke's area. If you're reading, signals are going to go from the uh, occipital lobe via the angular gyrus into Wernicke's area. If there's a lesion of the angular gyrus, you won't be able to have that communication uh, between here and here that can allow you to interpret visual stimuli as language and therefore uh, you lose the ability to read. Once a, uh, once a plan is made for what you want to say and the grammar is sort of understood, uh, the signal is sent via the arcuate fasciculus, which is not pictured on this picture, um, which is in the gray matter as it were. And then we hit here the broker's area, which is in the inferior uh, part of the prefrontal uh, cortex. And of, in, of note, as that Broca's area is quite close to the um, inferior uh, lateral part of the anterior central gyrus, um, which controls the face, the tongue, and uh, the throat. So once it's made a plan for what to say, quickly send signals to this appropriate area of the precentral gyrus that you can actually say uh, what you got to say. Um, on the other hand, for writing, the hand and the arms are handled more the lateral and superior parts of the pre-central uh, gyrus. Uh, so Broca's area, the superior part of Broca's area, roughly around about there, um, has connections up to these areas uh, in order to be able to control writing. Okay, let's give you some clinical insights. Um, generally, <coughs> Um, people have lateralization of the brain, and as one part of the uh, side of the brain specializes in language, and this level of specialization varies from person to person. Some uh, people are very specialized, so there's no language areas on the opposite side. Some people are not specialized at all, so each side of the brain actually uh, carries about half your language capability. And in general, men's brains are more specialized or more lateralized uh, than women. Diff and uh, the, the side of the brain that controls language is usually the left side. And uh, generally, um, if men have a left-sided stroke or left-sided uh, brain damage um, that involves the language areas, um, that tends to be more devastating if you compare it to women who have a left-sided stroke. Because women um, tend not to be as lateralized. Therefore, they have some backup language areas on the um, opposite side of the brain. Their brains are not as specialized um, and therefore if they have a stroke on the left side often they'll be able to recover um, um, more, uh, more quickly because there's uh, backup areas then take over a lot of language function and they tend not to lose entire language abilities. They still have a little bit of language ability preserved uh, on the opposite side. Whereas um, quite often men, if they have a left sided stroke, it can completely wipe out the capacity for language completely and um, because they don't have any backup um, centers on the opposite side of the brain, um, they tend not to recover as much function, if at all.